Now, what are we going to settle for? Ten ounces. Ten yes, ounces. and I think ten ounces is sufficient, isn't it? Yes. And I think if you use ten ounces, you will be able to find that out very easily, and it's much better than messing about with all these quarter ounces. What other diameter? Well, we could stick a pin through it if it, if it wouldn't burn. Well, it will, so we'll have to use the canisters. What other route do you know that would take you from Blackpool to Bowness? Well, what other route is there to Bowness? Mm -hmm. You can cut from Lancaster, um, yes, and Yes, well, that's the A6. Or, um, going on the M6. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you can go on the M6. We've got the blue card this time. I wish we had the train card. Can't we swap it? No, we've got the black scoops like that. Now then we can measure from London to Winnipeg and Blackpool to Auckland. Now then we'll measure from Blackpool to Auckland first. The whole map on Blackpool, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's on Auckland. Right. Have you got your finger right on Blackpool? So, if I gave you a diameter, you could find me the circumference, could you? Yes. Yeah. What would you do, Jane? Well, you can multiply by three and... A little bit. That would be all right, would it? Yes, it certainly would. Good. All right. Now, supposing I gave you a circumference. In the past, we tended to think, haven't we, that if a classroom was quiet, then there was concentration. And this isn't true at all. Concentration only comes through interest, through real involvement in what you're doing. If the children are presented with situations with problems which are of real interest to them, they get so deeply involved in them that there's no unnecessary noise. They're working something out. They're talking to each other, the same as adults talk over the problem. This is what we want, surely. We don't want children sitting up straight in their desks completely on their own. Language plays an essential part in mathematics. Children must discuss with each other what they're doing, for by this means they learn. And in this way, children's vocabulary grows and in turn helps their written expression, their, their written description of the kind of things they've been doing. They learn more, in fact, from each other and from the material and the problems presented than they could ever do sitting quietly listening to a teacher. The important thing about this is that children are like us all. They do like this little bit of personal and individual attention. Leslie! But they much prefer that the teacher should come and talk to the three of them and stand out in front of the class like a sergeant major with a piece of chalk in his hand and talk to the whole class. Because I don't think that they feel then that it is personal to them. The more personal a teacher can get with his teaching, the more it is appreciated by the child. And the more response you will get from the child too, if he thinks that you are talking to it personally. But if they're involved in group activities, then it is possible to get round to, to see them and talk to them, encourage them and perhaps pose an additional question which will help their thinking onto the next stage. Now, have a look at these three plasticine shapes. Alright? Yeah. Derek, which do you think is the biggest of the three? The cylinder. The cylinder, alright. Now, Alec, which do you think is the heaviest of the three? The kid. Now, Chris, which is the biggest? Uh, the cube. The cube? And which do you think is the heaviest? The cube. The cube again? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. Shall we? The cube. Now. What's that? Two and a half. What's that? Two and a half. Chris, what's that? Two and a half. All right. Surprise. <laughs> Now, something changes here, Edwina, when I move this new shape. Now, watch it carefully. Now, what changes? The area. The area, right. Now, Yvonne, something else is changing. What is it? That. That. What's that, Suzanne? The height. The height. Which height? The slant height or the vertical height? The vertical. The vertical height. That's right. So, if I want to find the area of this new shape, which is a parallelogram, what must I multiply together? The base by the vertical height. The base by the vertical height. That's this great. is the basic difference, isn't it? Before, we were concerned with getting the answer right. And now the thinking teacher is concerned with how much of this did the child understand? How far has he got in his thinking? 
It's a completely different approach from the old approach of accuracy and getting the answer right and getting it ticked. After a while, I'm sure all children find this method much preferable. They enjoy their maths, they look forward to it. Because after all, it is something which they can enjoy. They are doing something. In some cases, I'm quite certain the children think they are having quite a game, but a very purposeful game, and from our point of view, we must see that this is so. I suppose the reason that the whole of math teaching is in such a mess at present is that the syllabus hasn't changed, in effect, for 300 years. In fact, some Rip Van Winkle, coming back after being asleep for a thousand years, would be able to do most of the O-level syllabus. In particular, the primary school syllabus was last fundamentally looked at over a century ago, when the main object was to train people to do sums on a high stool at a large desk, to be Victorian clerks. And until about five years ago, no one had ever thought of altering this dismal state of affairs. What we're looking for is an improvement in the whole approach and an attitude to the learning of mathematics. This we cannot yet assess, but we can say that there is interest, that tremendous progress is being made, that children are now doing things at 9 and 10, which were formerly done at 13 and 14. I think we can widely generalize and say that we have underestimated children's ability in a very wide way. We, we haven't realized how much they're capable of. This we can be sure of. Anything else is prediction. But we would confidently predict that by approaching mathematics in this way, children will get a joy and, and a pleasure in it, which the majority of children have never had before. Time! Back up! Come on, bring the apparatus in. Playtime! Oh. Ah! <laughs>